Originally, um, uh, on my um, the platform um, for Prophetess Lorraine Lineo, she is also in the um, comments here. And I, I want to uh, give her um, say a thank you to her uh, because she entered, she invited me to come on her platform today to go forth uh, for the glory of God. Uh, it was a, it's a seven day revival. And I was so thankful that she reached out to me to go forth um, and, and um, you know, for this opportunity. So I'm going, when I'm done, I'm going to share the video so that she could share it on her platform. Hallelujah. So I'm going to start off with prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. I thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy, God. I thank you, Father God, for being an on-time God. I thank you for life. I thank you for for the, the air we breathe, oh God. I thank you for, God, your peace, oh God, that is that surpasses all understanding, oh God. Lord, as I go forth for your glory today, allow someone to, to receive healing, someone to receive inspiration, someone, God, to, be, to receive, God, a deliverance with inside, someone to be encouraged, oh God. Oh God, someone to feel restored and refreshed, in their spirit, in the name of Jesus, God, allow this to be an on-time word for someone. Allow it to change lives for someone. Allow them to be touched in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, I continue to praise you and I give you the glory, God, and I magnify your name, God. Allow everyone on this platform today to be blessed. Those that are coming, that are on live and those that will be coming on the replay. God, I send a special blessing unto each and every one of them. I send a special blessing to Prophetess Lorraine Lineo, um, who, who was the, is the, the one who created the, and, and started this for the seven day revival, God bless her, God, because you led her to allow many of your people to go forth, to give the word of God. And it's all for the glory of God. And we thank you and we praise you, God, and we give you the glory in Jesus name. Thank God. And amen. All right. All right. God bless you all. God bless you all. So I'm going to talk about once again, um, the topic is finding your purpose in pain, finding your purpose in pain. And so um, I want to first talk about purpose. Hallelujah. I want to first talk about purpose, purpose. And we all have purpose in this life. In this life, we all have purpose. You know, we all ha are, are, are born Hallelujah. With purpose, we exist with a purpose and God has creatively um, created us all uniquely with a divine purpose. And it's for, it's for we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Thank you, Jesus. And so this is not being, being made by God with, you know, uh, um, we're just not like, all of a sudden, we're just here. God did it for a reason. He, there's a there's a reason why we all exist. Hallelujah. And this is being made by God with reverence. You know, when it says fearfully, this is with reverence. We're being set apart. And, and he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. And God is, you have to understand, God is our father. God is our creator. He created us with love. Our DNA is Yahweh. God is Yahweh and our DNA comes from God. He, he is, he is, our DNA is our faith in God. That is our DNA. And when, and when you are a child of God, not only do you know who you are, but we must know whose we are, whose we are. And I'm going to read from Romans 8, 15 through 17. It says, for ye received not the spirit of bondage again unto fear, but ye received the, the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. So to know our purpose is to know our identity in God. 
We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Hallelujah. So this is our identity. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to briefly paraphrase about the woman who experienced the sufferings as I talk about the pain. Hallelujah. And as a passage states in the book of Mark 5, 25 and 34, and I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to paraphrase it. It says the woman, she had an issue of blood for 12 long years. And she went to many doctors and there was nothing that the doctors could do to help her. Hallelujah. Her issue became worse after some, after so long it worked, it got worse. And she heard about the miracles that Jesus was doing in the land. And when she saw Jesus in the crowd where many were around him, it was hard for her to get to him because of the crowd. And she could not get through the crowd to get to him. But the word said that she came behind him in that crowd and she touched Jesus' garment. And she believed that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she could be made whole. So she touched his garment and immediately the issue in her body dried up. She was healed. Hallelujah. And during that moment, Jesus felt the virtue come out of him. And Jesus turned to the crowd and said, who touched my garment? Who touched me? And, and as he looked around, he looked around and he saw the woman. And the passage states that the woman was fearful and she was trembling. She was afraid. Knowing what had just happened, she fell down at the feet of Jesus and she told him about the condition she was having. Hallelujah. And now in that verse, this is what Jesus said to her. He said, daughter, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Basically, he was allowing her to know you have been healed. You have been made whole. Now go in peace because you have been made whole from that disease. Hallelujah. And so the woman was not only healed, but she was made whole because she shared her testimony of how he, she was healed. Thank you, Jesus. She was healed. That's why she, she was made whole. But not only was she made whole, I mean healed, she was made whole and she was able to go forth and share her testimony. Her story of how she was healed helped others to have faith and it increased the others to have faith in the Lord. Her story helped others to have an increase of faith. The pain that she experienced led her to her healing and, it, and being made whole produced purpose in her life to go forth. Hallelujah. And later, to, it, 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 later on, it allowed her to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. And so when I think about pain, and we can experience physical pain, we can experience mental pain, we can experience emotional pain, a heartbreak, and we know that God can heal us all from all, any type of pain. He heals us and he makes us whole when he heals us. And when we think about pain, we think about the experience of discomfort. We think about struggle. We think about sufferings and hurt. We have to be reminded that pain can be our preparation towards our purpose. I'm going to say it again. Pain can be our preparation towards our purpose. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so the pain of past trauma, the pain of betrayal, the pain of rejection, the pain of abandonment, the pain of abuse and neglect, the pain of feeling lonely or the pain of losing a loved one. Our, our Lord Jesus Christ knows what pain feels like. He experienced the physical pain of being beaten on that cross. He was whipped. He was nailed to the cross. So he felt the pain, hallelujah, of the physical. And then he also felt the pain of being heartbroken, the emotional pain by being betrayed by someone that was very close to him, who he considered a friend of his, a student of the faith. He was a disciple. You all know who he was, Judas. And Jesus knows what it feels like to be rejected by his very own. 
Hallelujah. And his, and his very own did not even receive him. His own did not receive him. They believed he was a prophet, but they didn't believe that he was the Messiah. They didn't believe that he was the son of God. Hallelujah. And many still don't. Hallelujah. That's what's troubling. Many still don't. Hallelujah. But once again, his very own did not receive him. His own family did not receive him. So he knows what the kind of, that kind of pain feels like. The sufferings of Jesus, the pain that Jesus experienced. It has a way of teaching, teaching us that the substance that triggered the pain holds the value of preparing us for our purpose. Hallelujah, God. So when someone discovers purpose in life, there's a drive in them that sustains that person, their perseverance. I'm going to give you an example. Just like a grieving mother who lost her child due to gun violence. That mother may start or form a non-for-profit organization to help parents cope with the grief and the depression of losing a child to gun violence or whatever violence it was. And so other examples, and these are real examples, you all. Where pain becomes the drive, our drive to fulfill purpose where, where, you know, I read how a young woman who was a cancer survivor, she formed and she created a fundraiser to collect hair, to create wigs for those who suffer from baldness, you know, or losing their hair because of chemotherapy for cancer survivors. And this is a true example where pain can create the purpose. The cancer survivors experience the pain of losing their hair. They experience the feeling of the pain of going, having no hair on their hair, head. They have had beautiful hair, but all of a sudden they didn't have hair. It was beyond their control, but it hurt their hearts that they had to go through that experience. And so I'm here to let you know that our purpose is not about self-gratification. Our purpose is designed to help others. But the pain becomes our fuel. It becomes our fuel. It becomes our determination because there is a passion. Because there is a passion that is created out of the pain. And according to 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, it says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Thank you, Jesus. In addition, Romans 5, 3 and 4 says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Thank you, Father God. So pain produces a determination in us to not focus on the pain, but allow God, allowing him to allow us to focus on how the pain can heal and deliver us to see a much higher purpose in life. We have to take ourselves out the equation of why did it have to happen to us? And start focusing on how this pain is producing something much greater inside of us. Thank you, Jesus. Because it's producing a much greater purpose inside of us. Philippians 1 and 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will per perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm going to also read 1 Peter 5 and 10. It says, and the God of all grace who called you unto his eternal glory in Christ. After that, ye have suffered a little while, shall himself perfect and establish and strengthen you. Hallelujah. So we all have been through something in our lives. Each and every one of us have a testimony. Each and every one of us have a testimony. Whether or not we keep it to ourselves, we keep it private, or whether we are willing to share it, share what God is doing for us, share what God has done for us. Hallelujah. We know that when we love God and are called according to his purpose, all things are working together for our good. Amen. 
Amen. And when we allow God to heal us, he not only heals us, but he yet makes us whole inside. Wholeness within ourselves is where purpose begins because we become free of bondage. We become free of baggage. We are freed of our past mistakes. We are free from unforgiveness. We are free from holding grudges. We are free from bitterness and resentment. And we are made in the likeness of Christ. So we must examine our sufferings from a different perspective and not by giving in to self-pity and using that as an excuse for not getting better or using doubt as an excuse. For God's grace gives us divine healing. And the Bible says he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter and like a sheep before his, its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. And that is found in Isaiah 53 and 7. So Jesus did not complain through his sufferings, through the pain he endured. He, and he endured it. He remained quiet and, 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 and endured to the end. Hallelujah. And he accepted it. He took it for the team, you all. And as being the sacrifice, but I had a higher purpose. It was a cause and effect experience. And once again, it was a cause and effect and effect experience. And the cause is Jesus suffered by sacrificing his life for our sins. And the effect is that he, we are no longer in bondage for we are saved by grace. Hallelujah. And not of ourselves. So Jesus did not make it about him. He made it about us. Hallelujah. And so his pain was for the sake of getting us closer to God. And Jesus said, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. And sometimes what we are suffering doesn't make any sense because it hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. I'm going to, I'm here to tell you it hurts so bad, but when we can redirect that pain for the potential of purpose, it brings us to our destination. It brings us to victory. Hallelujah. And God sees our potential when others attempt to hold us to our past mistakes. Hallelujah. When people see the worst in us. Hallelujah. I love the song that Marvin Sapp sings. He saw the best in me. When everyone else around can only see the worst in me. Hallelujah. He saw the best in me. God sees our potential for higher calling. First Corinthians one, three through seven, it says, blessed be the God and father of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings, which we also suffer. Or if we are com comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation and our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation. Thank you, God. So God gives us the comfort and he gives us the strength to bear what we are going through for he knows how much we can bear and gives us the grace to have the strength to use and operate in our purpose. And I'm as I must be transparent with my life. God healed me from past pain. God healed me from depression, which led me to write and publish a book, which allowed me to become transparent through healing and through wholeness. Thank you, Jesus. And the healing was the virtue and the power of God that led me on the pathway of facing those fears in order to be healed. Thank you, Lord. And so I, I've, I've often mentioned in my book, that God had to break my heart in order to save my soul. I'm going to say that again. God had to break my heart in order to save my soul. And it felt like I was dying inside. Hallelujah. And it felt like I was falling in quicksand. But God showed me how real he was. 
hallelujah, in my life because no one could heal the wounds and the baggage that I was holding on, the baggage that I had carried all my life. It was a process that took some time, but the end results was miraculous. But we must understand that it that is that we must do the work. We got to do the work. God doesn't do it like a like a, 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 a light switch. It just don't come on and off. You got to do the work. You got to show God that you have the faith to believe that he can work a new thing in you. That you have to have the faith to believe that he can make you healed and make you whole inside. Thank you, Jesus. For he is progressing us through the process. It's a process, you all. And he and there is progression in the process. So writing my story was healing and deliverance. And however, sharing my story of the transformation and the transitioning of my life was, is my wholeness of my healing. My book became my purpose for ministry, but it did not stop there. My heart passion to see others receive the healing, to see others receive the deliverance, and most important, receive Christ as their personal savior is the greatest fulfillment. It was the greatest fulfillment and it did something to my spirit on the inside because it allowed me to know that I exist for a purpose, that my life is not here to just take up space. I'm not here to just use up oxygen, but my life is here for a purpose because you know why? Because God knew that before I was in my mother's womb, God knew what I was going to be doing right now. God knew what I was going to be doing right now, but it depends on you. It depends on us. It depends on me. Hallelujah. We got to show God, hallelujah, that what that he had, that power that he has put in us, it has to manifest. It has to go forth, but we got to do the work. You all God give us the strength and he gets, he gives us the power to go forth in the supernatural. Yes. In the supernatural. I had to take myself out of the equation and that took the sting out of my pain. Hallelujah. And in, and in pain, I found my purpose to wholeheartedly teach as a, as the, the, to deliver the gospel of Jesus Christ to all and everyone, whether they reject it or whether they accept it. Hallelujah. It is not my will, but it is God's will be done. That is in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm here to encourage you on today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is pain in, in your pain. There is a purpose in there. As I think about how pain produces purpose, I think about the rose. Hallelujah. In my book illustration, there was a rose that's on the front cover of my book. And on the back, it showed a, a rose that was withered. It showed a rose that had been dying off because it was exhausted because it did not receive any sun. It, it was, it was mal, it did not receive water. It wasn't nutrition. It was dying slowly. It was withered. It wasn't receiving. It wasn't in, 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 the, in the soil. It wasn't in deep soil. It wasn't receiving water for it was dying slowly. And that's how I felt like I felt like that withered rose. But as you know, with the rose, a healthy rose, when God, when, it, when the sun comes down upon you and the water, hallelujah, the living word is the water which comes down upon you. I feel my help coming on right now. The living word that comes down on you, hallelujah, hallelujah, and it allows you to be planted, as the word says, by the living it's like the rivers of living water. We are planted. Hallelujah. And it, and it produces growth. It produces more. Hallelujah. Inside of you. It produces more than you can see. It produces more than your eyes can see. It, can, it produces so much more. And it becomes a healthy rose. It becomes a healthy rose. And therefore, as you can see on a rose, you see those thorns on that rose. Those thorns, hallelujah, are the, is the protector, hallelujah, because nobody, the enemy can't come against you. The enemy cannot put you where you once was. The enemy cannot put you down under what you fought so hard to come out of because the grace of God is upon you. Because when you know who you are and when, you're, when you know whose you are, you have identity in Christ Jesus. Identity is what produces your purpose in life. When you know who you are on this earth, when you understand why you exist, 
That is where purpose begins. That is where God, it is a mystery because God already know what you're here for, but it is for us to discover the purpose that God is performing us in us because what, guess what? He's performing a new thing in each and every one of us. Why? Because we are fearfully and wonderfully made through Christ Jesus. So I'm here to let you know today, uh, be of good encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged, whatever it is you're doing right now, do it for the glory of God. Understand that purpose is not about you. Purpose is not about you, but purpose is for the glory of God. It is to help others. Purpose is to help others. We got to take ourselves out of the equation of pain and we got to re redirect that pain and understand that it is for a higher cause. Why did we go through such so much pain in the past? Why are we going through so much? S start to examine it. Seek God. Seek the Lord about it. And, give, and allow God to give you clarification. Allow him to give you understanding as to why am I going through so bad on this area, God? Why does this continue to hurt, uh, uh, to, tr to bring trauma? Why does it feel like I'm replaying this cycle all over again, Lord? I thought I was healed. And some of you all, you may have thought that you were healed, but you need to be made whole. There's a wholeness that comes. There's a wholeness that comes when God take over. There's a wholeness that comes when transitioning comes forth. There's a wholeness that comes forth when there's a transformation in the spirit. Hallelujah, God. So I admonish you all today to seek the Lord, seek the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. One of my favorite scriptures is seek ye first the kingdom of God, then his righteousness and all things shall be added unto thee. Hallelujah. Be encouraged on today people of God, sons and daughters of God, be encouraged and know that you are here for a purpose, that your pain will not take you out, that your pain, we, we, we bind the spirit of depression. We bind the spirit, hallelujah, of ex ex spiritual exhaust, exhaustion. We bind the spirit of rejection. We bind the spirit of abandonment. We bind the spirit of hurt. We bind that spirit, hallelujah, that have you feeling depressed and have you feeling like you cannot move any further, that you cannot go any further, that you cannot make it in this life. You can make it in this life. You can make it with the help of the Lord. You can make it with the strength of the Lord. But we also have to understand that when we are a child, when we are son and daughters of Christ, there's going to be some sufferings and tribulations that comes with the price. There's going to be sufferings and tribulations, but no, understand and no. That the Lord thy God is with you and he's not going to allow you to faint nor fall. In the name of Jesus, you are a conqueror. You will make it. You are the head and not the tail. There is greatness inside of you. Greatness inside of you. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are made whole. Rise up. Stand up, raise your hands up and give God some glory on today. Hallelujah. Cause it could have been a totally different day. Somebody else could wish that they can be in your shoes right now. Hallelujah. Somebody else wish that they can be in your shoes right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank God. Hallelujah. For purpose. We thank God for wholeness. We thank God for identity. And I have to tell you once again, if it wasn't for the pain, if it wasn't for my heart being broken, hallelujah, hallelujah, my soul wouldn't have been saved. Sorry, that's my puppy in the background. I apologize. But my soul, it had to take God to break my heart in order for him to save my soul. Thank you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So whatever pain that you experienced, know that it was for a reason. It was a reason that you had to go through that divorce. It was a reason that you had to go through that separation. It was a reason why it did not work out. Hallelujah. So do not blame yourself. Do not fault yourself. Do not go somewhere crying because it didn't work out a certain way. God had to allow some things to happen for a reason that we may not understand and we may not never understand it. But it is all things, once again, for those of you who love God, for those of you who are called according to his purpose, you, are the, you have to understand, once again, that all things are working together for your good. For your good in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to go ahead and close right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
I know that this is for someone on today. I know that someone is being blessed on today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Raise your hands up and give God some glory. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for God is good. Hallelujah. You must know who you are once again and whose you are. You must know that your faith is your DNA to God. Your faith is a DNA to God. Hallelujah. So we are the sons and daughters of God. We come from God. He is our creator. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is our Abba Father. Thank you, God. There is nothing that he won't do for you. There is nothing that if you ask, it shall be given unto you. Hallelujah. If you seek, he shall be found. Hallelujah. Knock and the door shall be open. Hallelujah. Have the faith to believe. Once again, your faith is the DNA of God. Your faith is the DNA of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do not cry anymore. Do not cry. Allow the cries, allow the tears that come out your eyes to be praises unto God. You don't have to be depressed anymore. You don't have to struggle anymore. You don't have to be frustrated anymore. You don't have to be depressed anymore. For the Lord that God is there to strengthen you up. He's there to build you up. He's there to lift you up in the name of Jesus. Those of you who are grieving right now. God is with you right now. Some things we don't understand. Some things we have prayed for. Some things we have had faith for. And we believe God. You're going to make it God. You're going to allow them to come forth. You're going to allow them to rise up God. Hallelujah. But you must understand. You must understand that God's will must be done. God's will must be done. It doesn't mean that you don't have any faith. It doesn't mean that you are not adequate enough in your prayers. It doesn't mean that God isn't listening to your prayers. Sometimes the answer might be no. Sometimes the answer might be not right now. And sometimes the answer might be yes. But know that it is the will of God. And you got to continue to be persistent in prayer. You got to continue to be, hallelujah, steadfast and immovable. And always abiding in the word of God. In the word of truth. God is your truth. God is your strength. Hallelujah. I'm trying my best to end this right now. Hallelujah. But I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to take his to have his way. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to go forth because somebody need to hear this because hallelujah. Greatness is in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you that someone is receiving the word right now and somebody is being set free as I speak, God. Thank you, Lord, for using me for your glory, God. In the name of Jesus, allow that person to be healed. Allow that person to be delivered and set free right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For you don't have to... Have, you don't have any troubles. As, as I used to hear Shembach say as a little girl, you don't have any troubles, but all you need is faith in God. All you need is faith in God. Once again, there is purpose behind the pain, behind the struggle. There is a purpose. There is a higher calling. There is a divine calling. Understand, hallelujah, that is much bigger than what you think it is. Hallelujah. God allowed me to see little angel. Yes, little old me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Allowed the Lord know what kind of mindset I was. The Lord know what kind of heartbreak I had. But it was only God. Let me hear, put it on there. Write it down. Only God. Hallelujah. Only God. Only God is the one. Hallelujah. That can bring you out of that situation. Only God is the one. Hallelujah. That will bring the transformation in your life. That will bring elevation. 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 I speak elevation in your life in the name of Jesus. It is the anointing of God, hallelujah, that brings the elevation. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Lord, we thank you, God. Oh, I'm trying my best, y'all. I'm trying my best. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying my best, God. Hallelujah, God. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is for someone, yes, behind that pain, Hallelujah. Is that child inside of you? Hallelujah. That you got to face. Sometimes you got to face the fears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be healed. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't want to face it. I had to. Hallelujah. But God allowed me to face it in order. Hallelujah. 
in order to be healed. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's, it's hard to. Hallelujah. Because there's fear. There's fear that's there. But God will give you the strength. Hallelujah. To be bold and be of good cheer. Hallelujah. Do not be weary in well-doing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. For God is our strength. I'm going to go ahead and end this, you all. Hallelujah. But you have to, I want you to be encouraged on today. God has delivered us. He has healed us from whatever we're going through. And that situation that has caused suffering, that situation that has caused grief, that situation that has caused disappointment, that has caused frustration, it is not for you to carry. It is not for you to carry. No, it is not. Give it unto the Lord. Cast your cares unto him, for he cares for you. Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing too hard for him. All things are possible through Christ Jesus. Yes, he loves us. He cares for us. Hallelujah. And he is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. So once again, I thank you all for watching. May God bless you all. I'm going to go ahead and pray us out. Hallelujah. For those of you, hallelujah, that did not get a chance to watch it from the beginning, I'm going to go ahead and keep it on the replay for you to replay it and watch it. But I want you all to be encouraged. I want you all to be in, to be blessed. I love each and every one of you all. Once again, God will heal you from the grudges. God will heal you from, un, from, from the un, unforgiveness. I don't care who wronged you. I don't care what they didn't do right about, uh, to, towards you. I don't care how much it felt like betrayal. Hallelujah. Always know that greater is he that is in you than he that is of this world. So God will give you the strength to not focus on their, their faults and their failures. But God has given you the strength to love them back and pray for them. Hallelujah. Because we're all not perfect, but we're perfect in Christ Jesus. Thank you, God. We are perfect in Christ Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. So we thank you, God. I'm going to go ahead and start and lead us in prayer as I close. Lord, Father God, I thank you for the word on today. I thank you for allowing me to go forth for your glory. I thank you and I ask God that you touch everybody that's on this line right now, that's on this live. I ask God that you heal them. I ask God that you bring deliverance to them. I ask God that you bring wholeness in the name of Jesus. Allow them to know not only who they are, but who they are. Allow them to find purpose out of the pain, God, in the name of Jesus, because it's going through the process. Allow them to be patient, to go through the process, to be healed, God, and to be delivered, God, and allow their lives to be have transformation, allow a transitioning to come forth in the name of Jesus, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Lord, we, we bless you, God. We thank you, Father God. For all that you're doing, God, we thank you for the anointing and we thank you for the power, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. And Lord, as I close, God, in the name of Jesus, allow the replay, those that watch the replay to be God, to receive God, you as their personal savior, to give their lives to you, oh God. To give their lives to you, oh God, and rededicate and those, some of those that may have to rededicate their lives to you. Allow them to rededicate their lives unto you, God, in the name of Jesus. And know the God that, that we are saved as we repent of our sins. You have saved us, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's all it takes is to love, oh God, to love them. To believe on him. To believe on the Lord. To believe on the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. It is the gift of God. It is the grace of God that we are saved. It is not of ourselves. Lest anyone should boast. Hallelujah. Salvation, you all, is the key to it all. But I'm here because my topic is about purpose, receiving, defining, finding our purpose out of pain. Allow everyone on this line, God, to understand that they are uniquely and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. And there is nobody on this earth out of 7 billion people on this earth. There is nobody like any, any of us for each of us are unique in our own way. Hallelujah. In our own way, you did not make anyone like us. 
Hallelujah. I don't care how much we look like our family members. I don't care how much we sound like them. I don't care if, if, if our demeanor is alike. We are not the same. Hallelujah. So we thank you, God. We thank you for your grace and, you, and your mercy. We thank you for favor. We thank you for restoration, God. We thank you for everything, God, that you're doing in our lives. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' matchless name. Thank God. And amen. Hallelujah. I hope that you are. I pray that you all were blessed by this word today. God bless you, my sister, woman of God, Lorraine, Lenio, prophetess of God. I thank you for this opportunity. I'm going to share this with you. I'm looking for many more opportunities to be on the platform. We and we will make sure that all technical situations are going to be resolved and are going to be worked through in Jesus name. God bless you all. God, thank you each and every last one of you for getting on. Love you all and be blessed. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Love you all. Thank you, Jesus.